U.S. President Joe Biden will be flying to India and then later to Vietnam, while giving the ASEAN meetings in Jakarta a miss. There's been quite some talk about uh, the U.S. President Joe Biden skipping the summit in Jakarta. The U.S. President Joe Biden attended the ASEAN summit. He's skipping this one. Is that a sign? Biden skipping the ASEAN summit has left many confused. ASEAN is short for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and it is a regional grouping that aims to promote economic and security cooperation among its 10 members. Therefore, considering Washington's recent efforts to woo Asia-Pacific nations into countering China, giving a cold shoulder to ASEAN just seems counterintuitive. So why did Biden choose to snub the most important regional organization in Southeast Asia? In a word, America is now bypassing ASEAN. This is strange, yes, because during Obama's administration, the United States president never missed any chance to poster on a U.S. ASEAN summit. Well, except for only once, during the federal government's shutdown crisis in 2013. But things took a sharp turn when Trump got in the White House. Washington's presence for similar ASEAN events has since dialed down from president to vice president, and then all the way to the National Security Advisor and Commerce Secretary. People often attribute this nonchalance to Trump's general hostility towards multilateral regimes. Maybe yes, but how do we account for Biden's snub to ASEAN? After all, he's the one hollering America is back, right? Well, if Trump was simply ignoring ASEAN, then what Biden does seems to be undermining it. What concerns ASEAN the most is to maintain a central role in Southeast Asian affairs, which has been categorically stated in its charter. But Biden is trying to build a new order in the region, where ASEAN's central role has to take a back seat. I think people are going to look back at this, uh, the Quad, and uh, God willing, uh, 10, 20, 30 years from now and say it changed the dynamic not only of the region but the world. At Biden's behest, Washington revitalized Quad and founded AUKUS. Apparently, compared to regional multilateral frameworks, Biden prefers exclusive, values-based insider clubs. These moves send a clear message. America doesn't want an open forum that encourages consensus and stability. He wants lackeys that scramble to jump onto America's bandwagon and not his plan to encircle China. Kita ingin ASEAN itu tidak boleh jadi proxy siapapun. Mm -hmm. Tidak boleh jadi proxy negara manapun. Jadi ASEAN bersifat terbuka, bersifat inklusif. Very few want to be caught in the maelstrom of any great power rivalry and the attempt to create a NATO-esque bloc and a pact that involves nuclear submarines has certainly stricken the nerves of Southeast Asian countries. When NATO planned to set up a liaison office in Tokyo, it was met with waves of opposition in the region. While the United States tries to marginalize ASEAN and turn the region into a battleground of the new Cold War, China is celebrating its time-tested partnership with the bloc. That is, its 20th anniversary of joining the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia. And over all these years, ASEAN's centrality has been central to China's foreign policy towards the region. One prominent example is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP. Ever since this framework was initiated in Cambodia in 2012, Beijing has reiterated ASEAN centrality in RCEP deals and negotiations again, again, and again. And today, this trade agreement that incorporates China and all the 10 ASEAN nations has grown to be the biggest free trade bloc around the globe. This is China's southern border port, and also a vital passage to ASEAN. 
Over two billion US dollars worth of cargo comes in and out every single day. As a matter of fact, this vibrant tree link goes way back, way before the RCEP. As early as 2010, China and ASEAN became each other's first free trade partner. And 90% of commodities now cross the border tariffs free. China has been ASEAN's largest trading partner for over a decade. And ASEAN started to become China's ever since 2020. The growing economic interdependence has served as a ballast for the relations between the two parties. What about America in this regard? Well, the United States has many free trade deals, yes, but with only one country in the entire Southeast Asia. This situation could have been changed with the ascent of the TPP, or Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Many ASEAN countries had already become prospective member states. But we all know what happened next. Okay. Great thing for the American worker, what we just did. It seems that Biden wanted to make amends for it. He began to peddle a less ambitious plan called the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, or IPEF. But this framework has been widely criticized for being more symbolic than practical. More importantly, for an alleged US-led economic collaboration with the ASEAN, three out of 10 ASEAN members were casually left uninvited Several countries have proposed various concepts of Indo-Pacific cooperation. These ideas are less fully elaborated or implemented than the BRI. These initiatives should strengthen existing cooperation arrangements centered on ASEAN. They should not undermine them, create rival blocks, deepen fault lines, or force countries to take sides. They should help bring countries together rather than split them apart. Singapore supports the Belt and Road Initiative. And the Belt and Road Initiative is indeed revamping the infrastructure landscape in the region. It helped launch the first high-speed railway in Southeast Asia, the first expressway in Cambodia, and turned Laos from landlocked to landlinked. The Asian Development Bank estimates there is an infrastructure funding gap of 2.8 trillion US dollars for ASEAN economies by 2030. And of all the investment in place to fill in this gap, 40% comes from China. No alignment, no interference, and mutually beneficial cooperation. These tenets are key to China's presence in Southeast Asia. And this is where China and America take their opposing stances on ASEAN centrality. And their contrasting views on true multilateralism explain why the two countries approach the region so differently.